Now there's one more set of cases, which is when you're titrating a weak base with a strong acid. Uh, but it would be kind of the same idea as we had here. So why don't you try drawing the, what the curve would look like for that? What would the curve look like for when we're titrating a, a weak base with a strong acid? A weak base so, with a strong acid. Come up the other, it should be the other way. But the, the equivalence of one is acidic. Yeah, so let's draw what, what would it look like for a weak base with so a strong you'd acid. Start, you'd start high up, mm -hmm. and then you'd go and you'd have a right up the upper region, and then you'd have the equivalence part of it right here. That looks good. So this would be the half equivalence point. This steep region here would be the equivalence point. What can you say about the pH here? It's sick. Yeah, because we've got a weak base and a strong acid, the equivalence point is the in the acidic region. One other uh, mistake that might have come up there that I wanted to point out was um, there, there was one point when we were trying to find the pOH, right? Uh, and we had something like Kb is something like 5 times 10 to the negative 7. And we tried, had, tried to find the pOH. And I think our first instinct was to take the negative log of this. But remember, the pOH is not the negative log of the Kb. It's the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So that's a common mistake that people make. PKB. That's right. You could take the negative log of this, but that would just give you the pKb. So this doesn't tell you the pOH directly. Instead, you have to use this as an equilibrium constant in an equation. Remember, we set up a normal equation where we get something like x squared over something equals this um, to, to figure out what the hy hydroxide concentration is. So you have to remember that the Kb does not tell you the hydroxide concentration directly. You have to use it in an equilibrium expression to find the hydroxide concentration. Um, you could find the pKb from this, but not the pOH. Same deal. Sometimes people think that the Ka is going to tell them the pH directly. That doesn't make sense. Um, you, use the PK, uh, you use the Ka to find the hydronium concentration, and then you can find the pH. So pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration, not of the Ka. OK, so uh, I think now it's kind of playing where I was talking about at the beginning. When people are having trouble with titration, um, the reason this is so hard is because it, and it requires you to have complete mastery of all the different cases of acids and bases that you've seen before, because there's all these different mixtures of acids and bases with each other, and all these all kinds of different cases that can come up. And what happens is people just learn one or two of the cases, and then they get them mixed up with the other cases. So the only way to really be confident on these problems is to do a lot of practice, um, and always be very clear in your mind that there's many different cases, and you have to always ask which case am I working on right now, and not get confused with all the other cases. It was good to go through all of them because okay. I individually, if I'd gotten what's the pH with this situation, I would have all handled them the same way. Right. Yeah. So how to find? So not, this was not just a review of titration. Then it was also a review of all these basic problems for uh, titration. Is really just putting a bunch of acid-base ideas together. So this is a good review for how to find the pH. Like I said, a lot, most of the questions we're doing here were pretty test-like. If you think about it, we hardly we did actually very few calculations. We actually did very few calculations. We showed how to use rounding and stuff to, to really avoid a lot of calculations. The one thing that was a little unrealistic was that I chose such small volumes that the numbers came out kind of weirdly small. Um, but if we made this, the, the numbers a little bit easier to work with, I think most of these could have been very fair test questions. So. Also, we saw start by just estimating whether you're going to have an acidic or basic answer. Maybe there's only one choice. It's acidic or basic there. One last comment about this stuff. Notice how helpful it was to always think in terms of start change end tables. Now, maybe on the test, you won't always have time to write out the full start change end table. But when you're doing your practice problems, you want to always write out the full start change end tables for the practice problems so you're building good intuition for what species are reacting with what other species and how the concentrations are changing. That also forces you to ask, am I reacting um, the acid or base with water, or am I reacting with another acid or base? The one time that we didn't use the start change end table approach was when we had both a weak acid and its conjugate base. Then we used the Henderson Hasselbach shortcut instead.
These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.